This is Ant A Karaba News at 7. I am Maureen Leo at your London News in detail. The scarcity of petrol, which has been affecting economic activities in some states of the country, has now hit the city of Karaba. Correspondent reports that few fuel stations in the metropolis are now dispensing the product, while others without the product are not open for services. Petrol stations with the product are currently dispensing to motorists between 185 and 250 naira per litre, and this has led to the queues seen in most petrol stations. And as the shortage of petrol bikes harder across the country, motorists have continued to spend man hours at the few filling stations to assess the product where available. Ashezi Gope, who monitored the situation in Makodi, reports that motorists and residents are decrying the excruciating effects of the acute shortage with the hope that the end is in sight. Jacob, Michael and Kajo are a few out of many motorists who have spent long hours queuing for petrol. Yet they say there seems to be no hope in sight. They decry the situation, describing it as worrisome. Sometimes you will come to filling station like 6 o'clock. Before you will get a food, it will be around 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the, in the evening. They, 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 they say since yesterday they are trying to discharge fuel. Till now we are on the line. They have not started selling. We don't know what is going on. This is two days. I'm looking for fuel to buy it and I didn't see anything. Without this Okada, I can't do anything. So I pray, I pray that government should help us. Although only one marketer was open to motorists selling at 230 naira per litre, long queues were also witnessed at two independent fuel stations as at the time of our visit, causing heavy traffic jam, especially around the Hurukum roundabout. Our camera lens, however, captured black market operators at major spots with jerry cans selling at 400 naira per litre. Have they moved from Akode to Boko? That is why I they sell 400. And from Boko, come back. Transfer fee with the price of the fuel for there. 216 naira above. Most of the filling stations in Makudi were locked, indicating the unavailability of the product. Attempt to speak to officials of the filling stations proved abortive as they were said to be out of the stations. In Makudi, Ashazi Gopet, NTE News. Meanwhile, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has identified 48 fuel stations with motorists in the Abuja city and its environs could get petrol irrespective of the time. A statement by the Group General Manager, Group Public Affairs Division, Darabadin Mohammed, urges Nigerians not to engage in panic buying as the corporation has made sufficient arrangements for the identified petrol stations to save the public without any interruption. Gas plant outlet is not permitted to be located around residential areas. This is why Nigerian midstream and downstream 
Petroleum Regulatory Authority is not comfortable when such plans are located against laid down principles. Correspondents propose that illegally located gas plant in Ogun State has therefore been shut down. The sealed gas plant was situated in a residential area along Awolowo Street in Ota. Officials of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority say, despite several warnings to owners of the illegal gas plant to relocate the plant from the neighborhood to a safer place, it declined and continued operating the business, not minding the danger involved. Following the refusal of the owner to comply with precise safety standards, the regulatory body not only shut down the gas plant but also uprooted the 5,000 kilogram gas tank with contents and took it to its office in Abelkuta, despite the resistance by the gas manager who claimed that they possessed necessary documents for operation. Don't tell me what this is. You can't give me pressure. And you can't tell me not to be what is open gas. Head of Operations, Nigerian Upstream Regulatory Agency, Ogun State, Oluwa Femi Adibowale says the authority will continue to clamp down on illegal gas plants to ensure a safe environment for all. We have served all of them, notice. Unfortunately, they've tampered with our sea, which is against even the law. They have the audacity the, you know, to even remove the sea and continue selling. You know, and that is an offense on its own. You know, so that's the reason why we have gone to this extent of forcefully confiscating the storage tank. He advised others having similar illegal LPG facilities to do the needful or be sanctioned in Abelkuta, Yemidalimo. NTN News. The Federal Road Safety Corps, Cross River State Command, has organized a capacity building workshop to enhance the command's effective performance on their jobs. The workshop had resource persons from the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital, driving schools and the state fire service. The event forms part of activities to mark the 2022 World Glaucoma Week with the theme, The World is Bright, Save Your Sight. Ode Alemio completes the story. World Glaucoma Week is a unique initiative to put a spotlight on the need to alert everyone to have regular eye checks for early detection. It is a joint initiative between World Glaucoma Association and World Glaucoma Patients Committee to create awareness on possible eradication of glaucoma. Since eyesight is one of the major criteria for driving, the Federal Road Safety Corps organizes a capacity building workshop to further educate officers and men of the command and the general public in this direction. If you have to take care of anybody aside yourself, you need to ensure that you yourself, you are healthy, you are well. And that is what we're doing now. We need to ascertain that we ourselves, we are, we, are, we are okay and we are knowledgeable about what we want to tell other people. Our mandate is about saving lives on the road and we need to call all on board to buy into the vision and see what we can do together to achieve this. Resource persons were drawn from the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital, State Fire Service and some driving school who spoke on the need for road safety personnel to be knowledgeable on critical areas to enable them carry out their jobs effectively. We are here to talk to the people in the Federal Road Safety um, Commission here because we know their deaths from accidents is also high on the list. And so if you do not see and you are a driver, you're bound to cause accidents in many places. We appreciate this um, call because it, it marks the beginning of a strong synergy between fire service and road safety. Participants bear their minds on the benefits of the workshop. After today's lecture, I can see that there is every need since glaucoma is a, 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 a condition that can lead you to uh, blindness silently. From the program uh, so far, we are able to understand that glaucoma can be preventable by early checks. My opinion is that these checks should be regular, uh, letting us end today so that we can be having these checks as regular as possible. The theme for the 2022 World Glaucoma Week is The World is Bright, Save Your Sight in Calabar, Ode Alenyo, NTA News. You're watching news reaching you from the studio of NT Calabar. You can as well watch this newscast at our YouTube channel on 
YouTube slash NTA Calabar. We'll take a break and the news continues in a moment. <laughs> Representatives has requested the establishment of military bases in parts of PKB state to cope incessant attacks by bandits, citing the latest security breach during which many local volunteers were killed. The report is here presented from the studio. The issue raised by the representative Tanko Sununu as a matter of urgent public importance brought to the fore incidents in the last couple of months in parts of Kebi where bandits attack helpless communities to kill, kidnap and rustle cattle. This attack, the lawmakers said, have led to humanitarian crisis in the state, particularly in the southern senatorial district. The House urges deployment of more troops and equipment to eliminate the criminals and also provide relief materials to those affected by the attacks. Moving on, the Inspector General of Police, Usman al Kalibaba, has ordered the immediate evacuation of all impounded, accidented and unregistered exhibit vehicles from police stations nationwide. The order is predicated on the incessant, embarrassing and unprofessional manner in which these vehicles are stacked with them police facilities, causing nuisance and disgusting sight at police stations. The IGP frowns at the practice of stockpiling vehicles recovered from crime scenes of vehicles which their ownership is being contested or endowed in police premises, with stringent requirements and cumbersome processes for the right of owners to reclaim them, stressing that such an act would no longer be tolerated as it is tantamount to gross abuse of administrative and judicial processes. Accordingly, the Inspector General of Police urges all concerned members of the public to approach various police stations for the recovery and claims. Regional cooperation and unified legislations can make significant impact in addressing major security concerns among African nations. Chairman of the Republic Constitutional Court, Sir Joseph Joe Benu, stated this during an audience with the leadership of the Network of African Parliamentarians for Defense and Security Committees in Kotonou. Abdullahi Mustafa has more. This is the highest court for constitutional matters in the Republic of Benin. The court makes final decisions on administrative, judicial, and electoral matters. Sir Joseph Jobenu is the chairman of the court. He described as a well-thought idea the formation of a network of African parliamentarians for defense and security committees, stressing the need for stronger and closer working relationship among African legislators towards curbing the menace of terrorism, internal and transboundary crimes. It primarily seeks to provide a platform for knowledge shared among members of the committees and of course, major stakeholders uh, of regional and potential security challenges. Shaban Sharada, who chairs the Nigeria's House of Representatives Committee on National Security and Intelligence, told the number one judicial officer that the network is not only working with African parliamentarians, but relevant institutions, including the judiciary. Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. Women have been urged to support each other to create opportunity for a better society. These were the words of advice offered by resource persons as the Nigerian Army Officers' Wives Association celebrated this year's International Women's Day in Yenagwa. Doris Akumanye reports. The days where the place of a woman is in the kitchen no longer exist as more women are brave enough to take their place in the global society. As International Women's Day is celebrated world over, Naowa is not leaving anything to chance to strike a gender balance across board. 
Guest speaker at the occasion, Esther Sule Lotz, said this year's team is out to awaken women to work together to achieve set goals. She kicked against gender abuse and maltreatment on women, which she noted has affected society negatively. And the typical woman today. So we are encouraging our women today to go back home knowing that the bias has been broken. We need to make a bold step forward to believe in the gender equality and to know that we, have, we can rise up to a greater tomorrow for every woman and we should fight for one another. Zono Chairperson Naowa Domtochuku Awolu reiterated the Nigerian Army's commitment towards the growth of women. She acknowledged the participation of women in every facet of human life, calling on the women to take advantage of the windows of opportunities to learn a skill and reduce the poverty rates in the land. Children, we're hoping they'll raise their children, their sons differently. Because like I said, once a son is raised correctly, he won't abuse his wife, he will treat a woman right and he will expect he he looks at every woman like his mom and he will treat you with respect. The interactive session provided a better platform for the women to open up and chart the way forward. The theme for this year's celebration is gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. Break the bias. In Yenegoa Dori Sakomonye, NCA News. Senate has rejected the bill seeking to amend Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act 2022. The ongoing amendment bill to the newly signed Electoral Act came from the executive and recommends that National Assembly do expunge Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Act. That section states that government appointees must resign before being voted for or to vote at any party congresses. A development, the president says, will mean to disenfranchise saving political appointees. The bill could not go beyond second reading as some of the legislators expressed contrary views to the intention of the amendment bill. Senate has confirmed the nomination of five persons for appointment as commissioners in the Independent Corrupt Practices and Order Related Offenses Commission. The All Progressives Congress has described the judgment of the Federal High Court purportedly sacking the Governor of Ebony State. David Omahi, his deputy and some lawmakers over the defection as travesty of justice. In a statement, the APC Director of Publicity, Salisu Neina Dambata, cited several judicial authorities which have made the verdict of the Federal High Court of Abuja a miscarriage of justice without the trial court citing any constitutional or electoral outrage to warrant the verdict citing Section 40 of the Constitution. The APC affirmed that the governor has every right to freedom of association, has a fundamental right with the verdict of the Federal High Court contravened. The APC also cited the well considered judgment of the same Federal High Court on the Zamfara governor's matter bordering on the same matter of defection, which gave Governor Bello Mata Welly a clean bill of health over his defection to the APC from the PDP. The APC pointed out that the trial court's founding for the PDP based on the Supreme Court's verdict on a major case without the court citing any constitutional or electoral act breach. Relying on Governor David Mai's right of appeal, the APC urged the people of a born state to go about their duties peacefully as justice will be pursued in the appellate courts vigorously. And finally, a recap of our major stories. Federal Road Safety Corps Crossing State has held workshop to commemorate World Glaucoma Week with focus on the need for proper eyesight. Fuel scarcity hit Calabar has fuel stations required long queues. It was also in the news that Inspector General of Police have ordered the evacuation of accidented and unregistered vehicles from police stations nationwide. That's it on the news feed. Thank you so very much for watching. Good night.